worthy of our praise today. Lord, we honor you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, we understood that you bought our salvation at a great price. Lord, as we look at the road to Calvary, as we prepare ourselves for the good news of Easter, Lord, we pray that, that we would understand just what a tremendous cost you paid so that we could enjoy the promise of eternal life, so that we could look forward to the resurrection. Lord, we pray that you would just bless us with your presence, with your Holy Spirit's work in our hearts so that we can understand your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The cashier was checking out uh, this uh, a lady and she said, cash, check, or charge. And she f was folding her clothes and she noticed the lady was, was having trouble with her difficulty with her purse, obviously trying to find whatever she was going to pay uh, the, the uh, ticket with. And, and uh, as the lady was uh, fumbling around in her, her purse, the cashier noticed a, a TV remote fell out. And the cashier looked at her and she said, uh, do you always carry your TV remote in your purse? And the lady kind of got red-faced for a minute and she said, No, but my husband refused to come shopping with me. So I figured this was the most legal evil thing I could do to him. <laughs> the most legal evil thing I could do to him, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking of, uh, about uh, life. Life is not always easy, is it? Life sometimes is, has inherent in it a lot of difficulty. Uh, sometimes we think that, and some churches teach, that if you're a Christian, life is 100% wonderful. Yes. That you never go through trouble. That you're always well-to-do. And you drive nice cars and live in nice houses. And, you know, it's kind of what we call a health and wealth gospel. And some people live it out. I mean, there's a lot of people that are, are bought into that idea. That, that if, if you live your life uh, in, in a response and relationship with, with the Lord, that you're never going to have trouble. The problem that I see with that, uh, one of the main problems that I see with that is Calvary is the road to Calvary. The events that happen in the very lives of the person that we're trusting in and to give us all this stuff, Jesus, he didn't have it so easy, did he? Did he? All throughout his life, he was traveling the road to Calvary. We read about in Philippians, we have this attitude in us, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself and became obedient to the will of God, even to the point of death, death on the cross. When Jesus Christ came down to this earth, he knew that he was going to Calvary. He knew before he came that he was going to Calvary. You can't read the Old Testament without understanding that Calvary has always been in the heart and plan of God. The road to Calvary. The difficulties that lie along that road. Jesus never had it easy. When a young man wanted to follow him, he said, the foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. It was never easy for Jesus and his disciples. The road to Calvary began with the creation of man. Because God always knew that we would fall into sin. And we would need redemption. And he planned from the very beginning to send Jesus to walk the road to Calvary. Now we pick up the end of that road today. We discussed a couple of weeks ago, and I apologize for not being here last week. Believe me, you didn't want me here <laughs> last week. Uh, and I understand Dave did a great job, which I, I really appreciate uh, him coming through at the last minute. Uh, though It must be something about the name Dave. I mean, you just got to know something about the word if you have the name Dave. I don't know. Uh, 
But uh, as I studied a couple weeks ago, we were talking in, in John uh, chapter uh, 11, and we talked about how, how the, uh, Mary and Martha met Jesus in a new way with the raising of Lazarus. And we talked about the resurrection and the rapture and how God was, was bringing the two things together in Jesus and how important it was that we understand both the resurrection as we get ready for Easter and the rapture that we look forward to uh, coming someday. This week is a, a little different kind of a topic. I, I'm not so sure I've heard many sermons based on this passage of Scripture. Uh, it's found in John chapter 11 again in verse 47. John chapter 11 verse 47. And it speaks about the conspiracy to kill Jesus. It talks about Jesus resolutely walking towards Calvary. It talks about him following the will of his Father. If you would uh, turn with me to John chapter 11 verse 47. And please stand in honor of God's word as we read it together. John chapter 11 verse 47. Therefore the chief priests and the Pharisees convened a council and were saying... What are we doing? For this man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, all men will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But a certain one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you take into account that it is expedient for you that one should die for the people, that the whole nation should not perish. Now this, he said, did not say on his own initiative. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation. And not for the nation only, but he might also gather together into one, the children of God, who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they were planning together to kill him. Jesus therefore no longer continued to walk publicly among the Jews, but went away from there to the country near the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim. And there he stayed with his disciples now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and many went up to Jerusalem out of the country before the Passover to purify themselves. Therefore they were seeking for Jesus, and were saying to one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think, that he will not come to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees were, had given orders that if anyone knew where he was going, and should report it, that they might seize him. Father, I know that it always was in your plan to redeem us. But Lord, oftentimes I don't think about how much it cost for you to buy our redemption. Lord, I know that you see great worth in us, Lord, because you love us, because you care for us. And Lord, I thank you for the price that you were willing to pay to redeem us, though we were unworthy of that great love. Father, I pray that you would help us to see this road to Calvary in Jesus' life and the kind of road that it was and understand some of that price that was paid. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and glory for what you revealed to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Well, the first thing I would say to you, that that road was not an easy road. I would say that that road was a stony road. It was a difficult path. Uh, the high priest said it expedient that one man should die for the people. But he wasn't saying that to say that, isn't it great that Jesus is going to die for our sins? He was saying that to say, Let's get rid of this troublemaker. Now it is true, as this scripture says, being high priest that year, that God put this prophetic word into his mouth and it became true for the nation that one man would die for the nation and not only for the nation, but all those who would believe you and I uh, in the future uh, uh, from this event. It's, it's wonderful that we, when we consider how Jesus died one man for all 
of mankind who would receive him. All the, the folks who would, would become his children, become God's children. But that was not said in this context in a healthy way. It was said by an enemy of Jesus. It sees that the leadership rejected Jesus. The, the, the religious leaders, those who were supposed to be following God, those who knew the word of God. How well did they know the word of God? They could tell the wise men, remember, where Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem, right? And later on, they made fun of Jesus, saying he was a Nazarene. And everybody knows the Messiah is coming from Bethlehem. And yet they were told that he was going to be born in Bethlehem, that he was born in Bethlehem. And still, they rejected him. They knew the word of God, but they didn't understand the plan of God, even though they knew the word of God. They were jealous of his influence. They, they said in this uh, scripture that they were uh, thinking that all men... Uh, he performing this man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, all men will believe in him. They were concerned that all men might believe in him. They were concerned that they were going to lose their religious standing among the people, their standing as religious leaders. They were concerned that people were going to begin to follow Jesus instead of them. You see, up to this point, everybody hung on their words. Everybody listened to what they said. And here this, this itinerant preacher, this, this nobody from the country has come and crowds have gathered around him. If he goes on like this, all men are going to believe in him. What should we do about that? They were jealous of him. They were threatened by his power. They said all men will believe in him and the Romans will come and take our place. I, I wanted to, and I didn't have time to this week. I really wanted to show you some slides of some pictures that we took when we were in Israel. You see, in Israel, if you're going to build, you have to meet certain uh, qualifications. And there was this one particular spot in the city of Jerusalem that was ripe for building. I mean, it was just all torn up and, and stuff. And, and they wanted to build some apartments there. But they had to appeal to the, the city, the, to the f government, to see if they could build those apartments. And the government made a, a deal. Said, if you excavate below the apartments, if you uh, allow the archaeological digs to go on below the apartments, we'll let you raise the apartments above that. And so there, we went to this one place where they had this... Uh, excavation of these homes that dated back to the time of Jesus uh, and these, this particular place and all these steel beams <laughs> running up it was all well lit because you couldn't see it from the outside uh, it was all excavated underneath these apartments these high rise apartments above it and it happened to be in the priestly section of the city it was the homes of the high priests and the other priests uh, in the city from Jesus' time that was being excavated. They had a special section of town and they had a special bridge from that section that went into the temple court. And this section of town where they lived was where we toured this priest's house. Oh, it was ornate. 